Breathe with me. Learn about caring, sharing, and equality. Just come, come. Breathe with me. Come and create a world where we're all free. We can say when we can show why. As long as we spread our wings and we can fly. Just come. Breathe with me. And ASAP. Hey, 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 I'm Derek. And I'm Garrett. And we are your ASAP drama team, and we are so thrilled to present to everyone our Act 2 curriculum. The title is Who's Home? Helping Others Make Equality. In this series, we'll be introducing you to some amazing games, and you'll be reading some incredible books. We'll also be teaching you some mindful practices. That's right, and it's all going to be led by our amazing host, Miss Reva Stover. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy our web series entitled, Who's Home? Helping Others Make Equality. Reva, take it away. Thanks, Garrick and Derek. Like they said, I'm Reva, and I'm so excited to be hanging out with my ASAP friends. Today, we have some cool stories, some creative activities, and some sharing. But first, let's get started with our ASAP affirmations. Now it's time for you to repeat after me. I am strong. I can do hard things. It is enough to do my best. I get better every day. I am important. I am a leader. I forgive myself for my mistakes. I choose my own attitude. Y'all are rock stars. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed our ASAP affirmations. Coming up, we'll have a special story, a part of our Read to Me ASAP series. But first, enjoy this activity with our ASAP drama team. All right, hello, hello. It is us with ASAP drama. We are here today to teach you guys a new game that you can play with each other on Zoom or you can play at home. All right, so I don't know if you've ever wanted to hear about your future before, if you've ever wanted to know something about your future, I definitely do. So we're gonna play a game called Magic 8-Ball. I don't know if you've ever seen a Magic 8-Ball, but it's this black ball with the number eight on top that tells you your future when you shake it. If you ask it a question, it will answer it for you. So because I don't have a real Magic 8-Ball, my friends here are gonna pretend to be my magic eight ball. And I'm gonna give them a number. I'm gonna give them a number that's not eight. Ready? I'm gonna give Snaya number one. Yep, and I am going to give Derek number two. And I'm gonna give Garrick number three. Very good. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna ask a question. I might ask a question like, will I have pasta for dinner tonight? So I might say, oh great, magic eight ball. Will I have pasta for dinner tonight? Now they, my people who are playing the magic eight ball are going to answer the question, but they only can say one word. They're gonna make a full sentence together because they can only say one word. So let me, let's demonstrate, ready? Oh great and powerful magic eight ball. Will I have pasta? for dinner tonight. You will possibly have pasta for lunch tomorrow. Period. Nice. Nice job. Wow. I like the possibility of me having pasta. I look forward to my possibility pasta. <laughs> what Garrick did was awesome to end the sentence. Garrick said, what'd you say, Garrick? Period. Period, okay? So when it's done, you say period. When you're ready for the sentence to be done, somebody says period. Exactly. That was awesome. Now, are you guys ready to really play this time? Okay, good, 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 good. I'm gonna make the question harder. Ready? All right, all right. Oh, great, in Magic 8 Ball, will I make a new best friend this summer? You 
certainly will. Period. <laughs> yes. Yes. I need a new best friend. I love my best friends, but I need another one. That's awesome. That's awesome. I also loved how short that was. Sometimes it's short and sweet. Sometimes it's very, very long. If you got a long answer, it doesn't matter. As long as you guys are working as a team to make a sentence to answer the magic eight ball. Um, other than that, that's cool. I hope you guys have a lot of fun playing this and we will see you next time. What a blast. Now let's get into our read to me ASAP. Today, George will be reading Sulwe by Lupita and Yango. Let's check it out. Thanks, Riva. Today, I will be reading Sulwe by Lupita and Yango, illustrated by Bashti Harrison. Sulwe was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family, not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn, Baba the color of dusk, and Meech, her sister, the color of high noon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Sulwe either. People gave her sister Meech pet names like sunshine and gray and beauty. People gave Sulwe names like Blackie and Darkie and Night. Sulwe felt hurt every time. So she hid away while her sister made lots of friends. Sulwe dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends too. So she got the biggest eraser she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. That hurt. She crept into mama's room and helped herself to her makeup. Oh no, she would hear about this from mama. Sulwe decided to work from the inside out and ate only the lightest, brightest foods. With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I wanna be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight, I want to have friends, if you hear me, my lord, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. When mama came in to wake her for school the next morning, Sulwe rose to find not a trace of daylight in her midnight skin. Sulwe told mama everything. Mama asked, what is your name? Sulwe, she muttered, and what does it mean? Star, Sulwe whispered. Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are. As for beauty, Mama said, rubbing Sulwe's stomach the way she always did to comfort her. You are beautiful. Sulwe sighed. Well, you are beautiful to me, but you can't rely on what you look like to make you feel beautiful, my sweet. Real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you. Now up you get and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? How could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared at Sulwe's window. The night sent me, the star said. Come with me. Sulwe hopped onto the star and off they went. Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day and they were sisters. They loved each other very much. But people didn't treat the sisters the same. People gave day pet names like lovely and nice and pretty. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. 
Well, Knight got fed up and walked right off the earth. Day stayed behind and enjoyed making everybody happy in the sun. But then, Day grew too long. Day began to really miss her sister. So did everyone else. There had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find Knight. And she did. I missed you, said Day. I miss you too, said Knight. But you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right. I don't, Day replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. Night returned, and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in, brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colors, and some light can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night, everything had a silver sheen, elegant and fine. Day told her sister, when you are darkest is when you are most beautiful. It's when you are most you. Could it be that Knight did not need to change, not even a little, not even at all? Now that Knight and Day were back together, a little bit of Knight returned to Day in the form of shadows, and a little bit of Day returned to Knight in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other, whether people chose to see it or not. You see, the star explained, we need them both on their sunniest day and their darkest night and every shade in between. Together, they make the world we know light and dark, strong and beautiful. Sulwe rose the next morning, beaming. There would be no hiding anymore. She belonged out in the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong. And if she ever needed a reminder of her brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see it for herself. Sulwe felt beautiful inside and out. The end. Have you ever felt different from the people around you? What are some things that you did to make yourself feel better? If you ever have a friend that is going through the same things, what are some things you can do to make them feel better? Once again, this was Sulwe by Lupita Nyong. Back to you, Reba. Wow, what an emotional story. Why do you think the kids at school wanted to be her sister's friend, but not hers? How does the way people act towards Sulwe influence her? Have you ever been influenced by someone else's behavior? What does Sole ask when she wakes up in the story? And how does she react when she didn't get what she wanted? What's something about Sole that she wishes she could change? And what's something about you that you wish was different? And why? Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.